be back. Hi, I'm Danny Quinn, and welcome to the latest episode of First Impressions. On tonight's episode, grab your Walkman, turn on your awesome mix as we blast off into outer space to review Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. So this movie is set a few months after the events of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, played once again by Chris Pratt, and his band of misfits including Zoe Saldana's Gamora, Dave Bautista's Drax, the talking raccoon Rocket, voiced once again by Bradley Cooper, and a much smaller baby Groot, voiced once again by Vin Diesel, find themselves face to face with the mysterious Ego, the living planet, played by Kurt Russell, who claims to be Star-Lord's father. However, the Guardians must also contend with a group of beings known as the Sovereign, led by Elizabeth Debicki's High Priestess Aisha, as well as Michael Rooker's Yondu and his group of Ravagers, who are out to get them. And there's also some tension between the Ravagers, who are kind of pissed off at Yondu for his dealings, and they're heavily considering turning against him. And on top of that, Gamora must also contend with her sister Nebula, in one hell of a sibling rivalry. And if that's not enough, the Guardians must also contend with the threat to the galaxy that they must stop before it's too late. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this sequel. I think it's fair to say that the original Guardians of the Galaxy had a lot working against it. Very out there premise, very oddball, eccentric characters, as well as the director being known mainly for B-movie schlock like Slither and Super, and coming from the trauma factory of filmmaking as well. But it still stands as one of Marvel's best offerings mainly because of its out there premise, its weird but lovable characters, the witty writing and confident directing, the fantastic visuals, and above all else, the soundtrack. And considering that Guardians of the Galaxy is arguably one of Marvel's best movies, how the hell is the sequel supposed to top that? And true, this movie doesn't have the same wow factor as the original Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's still a really good film in its own right. James Gunn writes and directs this movie with a real confidence. That confidence was there in the first movie, but it's a lot more fully fledged here, and that's exemplified in the movie's opening credits sequence, which is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant way to introduce the characters again, and really bring us back into the world. And that confidence also extends to the film's visuals and to its action scenes as well. And the dynamic between the Guardians is very strong throughout. You really get the feeling that despite all the bickering and arguing between them, they still really care for each other, they really look out for each other. Chris Pratt is once again very likeable and charismatic in the role of Peter Quill aka Star-Lord. He can be a bit arrogant and a bit reckless in places, but he ultimately shows a lot more leadership skills in this sequel. Dave Bautista is once again great in the role of Drax. He's so unintentionally insensitive and has some of the movie's best lines, but he also has a very nice uh, relationship with the newcomer um, to the franchise, Pom Cummins Mantis. She has the ability to read people's thoughts and how they're feeling, but she's had virtually no contact with other human beings, so she doesn't know how to interact with them. And the relationship that forms between them, I have to say, is genuinely quite sweet. And then there's Rocket, who's still kind of a jerk in this movie, and he's very tempted to revert to his own ways. But he's also but he's also very clever and he's a complete badass. Bradley Cooper once again adds a lot of charm and likability to the character through his brilliant voiceover work. And then Diesel is once again brilliant in the role of Baby Groot. He's a lot smaller and more innocent and childlike, but he's no less deadly than he was in the original. Kurt Russell's also great. I thought his role of Ego was actually quite an interesting part, and the character does have a lot of interesting developments, which I can't reveal in this review because I've just been the plot, unfortunately. But I will say that he and Pratt share some great scenes together. But the most surprising member of the cast, I think, is Michael Rooker as Yondu. He was really good in the first movie, don't get me wrong, but I think he's even better in the sequel. We see a much deeper side to the character that was only really hinted at in the original, and the scenes between him and Quill are really emotional and heartwarming. And then there's the characters of Gamora and Nebula. Gamora wasn't really one of my favourite aspects of the original, but she's a lot more well done in the sequel. She really impresses in the action scenes, and she shows herself to be a very likeable straight woman in the cast, even though she does have a few laughs here and there. The character of Nebula, I think, is also done even better than she was in the original. Karen Gillan's brilliant in the part, and I think the character is written superbly in the sequel. We see a much more sympathetic side to the character, and whenever you learn more about her, you actually do begin to feel somewhat sorry for her. Or at the very least, you understand why she acts the way she does. And the more antagonistic characters in the movie also have surprisingly good motivation in this movie too. For instance, Yondu's Ravagers are pissed off because they've fallen on hard times and they're fed up with Yondu's showing leniency towards Quill and his gang. Again, their motivations are quite understandable as opposed to just being baddies who want to destroy the galaxy for no reason. As for criticisms, the humour doesn't always land, 
but some crude jokes have been a little out of place and unnecessary, which is weird because the rest of the humour in these movies is generally very dry and deadpan. It's not as focused or as structured as the first movie is, it is a little all over the place at times. And as I mentioned earlier, it's just not quite as fresh or surprising as the original, but it still delivers regardless, even if the movie is more focused on the characters than the actual storyline. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I kind of like the more character-driven approach to the sequel, rather than just doing the same thing but bigger, which it does do, but not quite as much as other sequels. Cough, cough. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is not quite as fresh or as groundbreaking as the original, but in some respects, I kind of like it better. The character development is really strong, and the relationships between many of the characters are very well written, with occasional moments of depth. The action scenes are very entertaining, the musical numbers are great, visuals are for the most part outstanding, the production design, cinematography, it's also a very high standard. And it is quite an emotional film in places, it really does make you feel like you've been on a real emotional roller coaster at times. But its focus on the characters means that it doesn't quite have as much of a clear-cut narrative as the original film. But I really enjoyed it regardless, and I'll give it a strong 8 out of 10. As you can see here, I've created a little scale where I will rank the MCU films, Captain America Civil War being at the top, and Thor The Dark World being at the absolute bottom. But where would Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 rank? Hmm. I would probably put it just above Iron Man 3 and Avengers Age of Ultron, but just a little bit below the Avengers. Come back in July and I'll rank Spider-Man Homecoming on the MCU scale. And then again in November when I'll rank Thor Ragnarok on this scale. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it took so long to come out, i am been away for a while. I'm glad to be back, I'm going to be reviewing Alien Covenant next. And then I can actually get back to a more of a consistent schedule. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, I'm Danny Quinn, have a pleasant evening.